Task 1 talks about demonstrating an understanding of the FAZE Act as a regulatory framework. Task 1 has four qualifying criteria. Let's look at Task 1, Qualifying Criteria 2. Provide an overview of the financial services and different types of financial products a representative can deal with. We now know that the FASE Act regulates the business of FSPs and the conduct of its KIs and reps who give advice and or provide intermediary services to clients. Let's explain in more detail what advice is and what intermediary service is. We will start with advice. Advice is essentially when an FSP its KI and representatives, who are agents and brokers, give financial advice to clients. When we talk about advice, in terms of the FASE Act, we also refer to 1. A recommendation on a financial product 2. Guidance on a financial product and 3. A proposal of a financial product to a client that results in a client making an informed decision. A financial decision made by a client can either be a decision to buy or invest in a financial product or change, replace or cancel a financial product. The overall principle here is this. Where a client makes a decision that changes their financial position based on an FSP's recommendation, guidance, or proposal, then that input from an FSP is considered to be advice under the FASE Act. Intermediary service, on the other hand, does not involve giving advice to a client. Rather, it's any service other than giving advice performed by an FSP, KI, or REP on behalf of a client or a product supplier. This service still needs to be from a client's instruction after making an informed decision. Here is an example to help you understand the difference between advice and intermediary service. Think of intermediary service as a client, wanting to buy a financial product and needing help to complete the transaction. Maybe a client wants to buy listed shares and asks a rep of an FSP to buy on their behalf. Here the client is acting on his or her own free will and only requires a rep to process the transaction further. Intermediary service involves a service that results in the following. 1. Dealing in financial products on behalf of a client for example, buying, selling, managing, keeping safe or servicing a financial product. 2. Collecting premiums from clients that are related to a financial product. And 3. Receiving, submitting, processing or settling claims on behalf of a product supplier from a client. So, you see, if an FSP, KI or REP recommends guides or proposes to a client to buy a financial product like shares, that would fall under advice. But if a client wants to buy a financial product out of his or her own free will and needs an FSP, KI or REP to help finalize the transaction, then that would fall under intermediary service. The giving of advice and or rendering of intermediary service may lead to the conclusion of a transaction for a particular financial product. Let us now talk about the different types of financial products as classified under the FASE Act. These are the products that an FSP, KI, and REP may render financial services on. 
Let us start with securities and instruments. When we talk about securities and instruments, we refer to products like shares in a company, which are also called equities, debentures, money market instruments, warrants, options, and other similar instruments, derivatives, and bonds. These terms may sound complicated, but what you need to remember is that they basically give the buyer a claim or a choice to potential financial gains that are linked with those securities and instruments. For example, when a client buys shares in a company, he or she receives a confirmation in a form of a share certificate, which confirms their right as an owner or shareholder. But unlike when you buy a house or a car and you get something that you can physically touch, when you buy shares or debentures or one of the other securities and instruments, you don't receive a physical product that you can touch. You receive a confirmation of your right as an owner or shareholder. The potential gains on these types of financial products are dividends for shares and interest for debentures and similar interest earning products. Next, we have participatory interest or one or more collective investment schemes or unit trusts. With unit trusts, clients' monies are pulled together to buy different types of investments that are held as a unit. Each client that invests will share in the risks and rewards of that investment in the proportion of his or her share. The unit trusts are managed by FSPs called discretionary FSPs or fund managers. Next, we have long-term and short-term insurance products. Long-term insurance products cover lasting events in life like death, retirement and disability. A good example of a long-term insurance product is a life cover that pays out when a client passes away, retires or becomes disabled and can no longer work. Short-term insurance products, on the other hand, cover personal possessions or assets on a short-term base, such as a car or a house and its contents. Next, we have pension funds and friendly societies as financial products. A pension fund is basically a fund that is set up to cater for employees for when they reach their retirement age. A client would contribute towards this fund via his or her employer through deductions from their salary. Then, when the client retires, they can access the money that they saved. This will be their retirement income. There are several types of retirement funds such as pension funds, provident funds, and retirement annuities, or RAs for short. A friendly society, also commonly known as a burial society, is like a stock fell with its operations managed by a board of trustees. Next, we have a financial product called foreign currency denominated investment also known as a foreign financial product or foreign financial instrument. A good example is when an FSP makes an arrangement on behalf of a client to buy a product or investment that is available outside of the Republic of South Africa. In this case, South African currency will have to be converted into a currency of the country where the investment is like the British Pound or US Dollar. Another example is where a client buys shares of a foreign company using foreign currency. Next, we have long-term deposits and short-term deposits as defined in the Banks Act. These have been classified as financial products. Banks perform many functions one of which is receiving deposits from clients 
on a long-term period. That is a period of more than 12 months or a short-term period that is a period of less than 12 months. This function of receiving deposits falls within the Phase Act. Another function that a bank performs is providing loans and other forms of credit. Please note that this function does not fall under the Phase Act but the National Credit Act. Next, we have health service benefits that are provided under medical aid schemes. Please note that a medical aid is a form of insurance where a client pays a monthly contribution or a premium in exchange for financial cover of medical costs at an unforeseen future date. This is especially important if you want to access private medical care. Having learned about different financial products as defined in the Phase Act, we then turn our focus on licensed categories. The licensed categories are covered in more detail in the videos about licenses. For now, let's mention the different types of licensed categories. There are five licensed categories. Category 1 is for FSPs who only give advice and render financial services. This is for FSPs that are not in specialist categories of 2, 2A, 3 or 4. If the business activities of an FSP do not fall under one of the specialist categories, then Category 1 license authorization will apply. Category 2 is for discretionary FSPs, also known as fund or investment managers. These FSPs invest funds on behalf of clients at their own discretion. This can be locally or outside of the Republic of South Africa. In this category, there is no bulking or pulling of client funds. Category 2A is for hedge fund FSPs. These FSPs function like the discretionary FSPs, but the funds that they invest are pooled funds. Category 3 is for administrative FSPs. These FSPs buy and sell financial products in bulk and reconcile their books on a daily basis. They do this for their clients who can be either Category 2 FSPs or natural persons. Category 4 is for administration functions and are only considered for intermediary services. They intermediate between the insurance companies and the assistance business FSPs like funeral parlors and undertakers. They always have a binder agreement with the insurance company to perform the intermediary function. Please note that all categories, except for category 1, are specialist categories or specialized in the functions they offer. The licensed categories mentioned have product subcategories. This means an FSP that applies for a phase license would also have to apply for a specific product subcategory. We hope you enjoyed the video and learnt a lot. Please make sure to check out our other RE videos.